So, I made a laptop with desktop grade components and two displays. I saw the MacBook Pro with a function key touch bar and wondered, what if you took that and stretch it out across the entire keyboard? You'll lose the keyboard and trackpad, but you get two screens. This is a proof of concept and a prototype and hence it isn't very aesthetically pleasing. I'm trying to achieve something like the S4 Mini pad with a portable screen. Here are the specs. We'll start by tearing down desktop screens to reduce weight and space. Remove the stand of the screen. Here's the screen's model number. The LCD panel's model number. Remove the inbuilt speakers and the frame of the screen. Here are the display control boards. So, I broke one of my display boards and why not get a replacement while I'm at this presidential gun salute. Uh, got it from Simlin for $20. They claim it was broken but I'm pretty sure that the display board is okay. So, let's go. A desktop screen weighs 3 kilograms. When stripping down to its core components, it weighs around 700 grams. Here are the video inputs, with a screen display connector and LED power. The row of LED lights at the bottom of the screen is its only light source. Now let's see how an LCD screen works. A white background sheet followed by a light guiding plate and three light diffusing plates creates an evenly lit screen. And the last light polarizing layer is added. This is the only part that actually creates the display. Here's a more detailed look into LCD screens by Bill Hammock. Links in the description. I'm starting with a 5mm clear acrylic panel and laying down components. Then mark out mounting holes and guidelines. Let's start drilling. The motherboard standoffs go in first, followed by testing it out with the motherboard. I'll drill more holes to mount the side panels to the base with L brackets and screws. Countersink the screw holes so the screw sits flush with the panel. This is the power delivery situation. Each screen needs 19 volts DC power which can be provided by two separate power bricks. To save space, I used one more powerful power brick and the DC splitter. But the connectors are still too tall to fit within the 5cm profile. 90 degree connectors to the rescue. 
but they can't fit the DC splitter. So I use another adapter and this plugs into the DC jack of the control board within the 5CM profile. We'll add the PSU into the equation. Now I don't want the PC to be powered by two wall plugs, so I'll get another splitter. One goes into the PSU, the other into the power brick with a Mickey Mouse adapter. Now three devices can be powered with one wall plug. With all the holes added, start mounting the components. Two display boards go in first. Then the power supply. I tape some excess acrylic so the PSU doesn't rattle in the case. Then the AIO is screwed into place with three 40mm fans. Screwing in the motherboard. Plug in the 24 pin connector. Now for the GPU. Hi, I'm currently outside my camp, but I just bought two GTX 1080s for around 530 each. It's used for video editing and it's a great upgrade from my GTX 1050. Only one goes inside my case, so the other one I don't quite know where it's going, so just leave it there for now. Okay, thank you. The video output of the GPU is routed back into the case and connected to the display boards. This is the screen assembly and I'm drilling a hole to pass the display cable through. Then join two pieces of acrylic with a friction hinge. Pass the display cable through and connect it to the main computer. downloading the NVIDIA graphics driver and I forgot to edit the Wi-Fi receiver and the crappy inbuilt speakers. I'll add a small blower fan to this space to exhaust the GPU heat out. And the computer is finished. Sadly, I did not manage to cram in the keyboard and mouse. So I have to connect it to the motherboard and leaving the front of the PC exposed. There's Wi-Fi, but I still prefer Ethernet. The GPU is 79 degrees Celsius when running Fermark and has the dimensions of 85 by 500 by 350 millimeters with a volume of 14.8 liters. This is the final case layout with two display boards for the screens. Here's the power supply, the motherboard and GPU. The AC adapter for the screens, the modded AIO to cool the 1700X, and lastly the SSDs. And that's about it. Hi. And 
this is the end of the project. One monolithic computer, which is 10 kilograms heavy and not that portable. I wouldn't recommend anyone to do this project anymore. And it still requires you to power it from wall. And it doesn't have a keyboard or mouse. Just holding it like this tires my hands out. Maybe because <laughs> I don't gym. But as you look at it, you pull this up to a Starbucks, people think of they're gonna think that you're crazy. You might break your components while attempting this project. So I do not recommend anybody do this unless you have a well thought out plan or better materials that I have, which I'm sure some of you do. If you do attempt this, please just send me a link and I'll see you next time. So I'm here one week later with the conclusion of the laptop project. As you can see, I've, I've changed back to my original case which is only about 8.5 liters big. The laptop had issues with stability and kept crashing while open intensive programs like Premiere Pro and After Effects. One screen also stopped working, which I'm pretty sure there are loose connections inside there. That's why I said, please do not attempt the project. The laptop project was an utter failure, but still fun while it lasted. So I'll see you in the next video.